I seriously see these as very dark days for South Africa. Yeah. Did you? Nah. What? I'm a glass half full kind of guy. I love a Sunday bry. <laughs> the beer is always half full, not half empty. <laughs> I don't think the box will ever, ever have it that bad again in their lives. Whatever could have gone, go, gone wrong, yeah. did go wrong. Okay. And I think that's out the system. Look, there's a couple of things we need to look at, 100%. And I'm sure you'll grill me on that uh, this morning. But it will never be as bad as that. And I think we can only go upwards. Oh, that's the truth. You can't play any worse than they did at the weekend. That's for sure. That clown in the middle with the, with the whistle as well was also a nightmare for me. I mean, I hate to blame referees. I, you know, I cringe when we do that to explain defeats. But that guy, it was a circus. Yeah, no, absolutely not. And I, just to, to reinforce your point is that this cannot be about money about the ref. I think the Springboks did not pitch physically. Yep. Uh, I think uh, Argentina wanted the game more. Um, I, I think in the face of adversity, the box crumbled, uh, which is a bit worrying. However, let's just address the point. Let's just look at a couple of facts about Poit. You know, that first try that Argentina scored, there was a clear forward pass. Clear forward pass. And he clear. blocked Luit de who was coming across in the vacuum to make a few Exactly. Tackles. And that's number one. Then two minutes later, one of the few great Springbok lineouts goes straight to Lurt, who was very, very good on that yeah. day, comes down, um, had the clear line in he front was of gone. him, open space, and uh, Boyd uh, blows it up, says, sorry guys, sorry, sorry, sorry. So just eight minutes into the game, okay, and, and perhaps the box are seven, minutes, uh, seven points up instead of being yep. seven points down. And then, and then just, just, just three other things. Um, you, you know, not seeing the forward, the, 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 the knock-on before Bosch's yep. uh, dropkick. The unbelievable calamity that is putting time on while they've got four medics on the field. What? That is ridiculous. <laughs> and then calling the TMO yeah. to tell him if, if, if Kubis Ranach had taken it from the spot when he did it right in front of him to ask the TMO, did he take it from the right spot? Dreadful. Again, just to re-emphasize, yeah. <laughs> and I must say that, yeah. this is not money about the ref. Those are just five facts where he got it completely wrong. Yeah. Um, and, and it's just unacceptable. And I, I hear that the, the box are, are going to uh, question um, how he looked at, at various parts of the game, but most importantly, the scrum. But I mean, do we not maybe need to forget about referees uh, in terms of being able, uh, allowing them to control games and decide results like this? I mean, how do, you, how do you get around that? Because he was also the guy at Eden Park that sent Bismarck off for a cracking hit on Dan Carter. This guy's got a track record of doing it. Nothing's gonna happen to him. He's refereeing England, Australia, Twickenham on October 3. It's going to be another circus show there. How do you get around that as a coach? Yeah, no, I, I think and that's ex the pertinent point. Okay, so Jean de Villiers was brought back as the steady old hand, been there, done that, yep. cool heads. Yep. Yet, even in the face of Puerta, even, 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 even de Villiers cr crumbled, yep. so to speak. So, to your point, I don't think it's a coaching thing. Okay, perhaps you, you can prepare the players in, in coaching sessions. You can have your, your, your head shrinker speak, speak to them. Right. But realistically, it's on the field. You know, in the face of adversity, you, you never question the ref. You just live with the refereeing decisions. And I think South Africa and, you know, the Springbok side have been traditionally quite bad at that. They let little things get to them. Yep. You know, you just think about um, even Fred Pri, probably the, one of the great scrum halves of the game. He's always going like this, you yep. know, towards the ref. Yep. We let the referee get to us. Yep. And that definitely happened on Saturday. It's something that they've got to change. Yeah, so you know my tactical preferences. I'm all for playing on the right side of the field. When you've got a ref like this who's a ticking time bomb, surely we should be putting boot to ball, making sure the game's on the far end of the field. We kicked seven times against Argentina. I think the Bulls kicked more than that in the first 20 minutes the whole of 2009. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw your tweet, <laughs> the Grinch of rugby. Um, but uh, I mean, you're absolutely spot on. I'm just not sure that it actually was about kicking. Um, uh, you know, Pollard got a, a few things wrong. And yeah. uh, you know, it was very sad to see that the Durban crowd booing him. Yeah, I mean, that that's was dreadful. Cool. I mean, that's like uh, days of Monty, you know, when, yeah. when he first wore colored boots in yeah. Bloom. And, you know, it just brought back those memories. But you can almost understand the frustration of the fans. Yeah. I, I'm not condoning it, yeah, yeah. but it was really sad to see. So perhaps, you know, perhaps Lambie should have had, had an earlier shot there. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, they, they just look startled. Mm. It was deers in the headlights. Mm. They looked like they hadn't been coached. It looked like they got together on Friday. Yeah. So yes, perhaps they should have kicked more. But I just think there was, everything went against them. Yeah. But they almost forgot to play rugby. Mm. Okay, well, Vincent Koch was a guy who was on the wrong end of Pot's whistle several times. Justifiably? I mean, I don't, I, you tell me. Scrum time. No. And, you know, Peter de Villiers, um, 70 tests for France. Um, you know, he's an established tight head. Yeah. He's been there, done that. Not even he could tell why, why, 
why Koch was penalized so much. So I went to the tape, okay. uh, I got the super slow-mo out, yep. and I watched every single scrum. There were six of them in the first half. So the first one, uh, Ayezo was penalized. Right. Okay, so he was the one dropping that scrum. Right. That all changed. How come? Because the second scrum, Ayeza absolutely smoked Koch. Look, Koch is first starting test. Sure. Um, he had a great super rugby. He is going to be a good tight end. That is a fact. He paid his school fees properly in yeah. that second scrum. He was introduced to his own arsehole. He saw row F. And, you know, it's dreadful. But every tight end goes through that. Yeah. But suddenly then, Poeta had it in for him. And every single scrum from then on, well, there were only four of them, um, the, the box were penalized. Yeah. But two things. Okay, Creevy. Old, old hand. Yep. You see how he bound and he pulled his, pulled his jerseys tight, up, yep. which means that Koch had no, no, no way to bind. He had to bind on like the underarm. It's like, it's like binding on your granny's, granny's <laughs> night. So he had no way to bind. And then very sneaky. That, 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 that scrum just before half time where Poitier just basically lost it to yep. tell John, listen, he's got to go. It, yeah. um, Ayeza just went, had a sneaky little twist, and that's old skill. And, and, and Koch lost his bind yeah. and went down, and, he, and, that, and that was the end. Yeah. So basically, Poeta, I think, got it wrong. Yeah. He, you know, he saw that big scrum, which is number two, and then he just said, OK, Koch, you're having a bad day. I've got it in for you. Uh, another case of poor refereeing. Yeah. You, you said it, it was Vincent Koch's first start, and maybe that's the knock against the Springboks at the moment, is we're finding out on the eve of the World Cup what these guys can do in starting roles for the first time. In Heineke's defense, obviously, everybody expects the box to win every time they run on the field. But, you know, we, we, we kind of needed to find out these answers about these guys long before now. Yeah. And, you know, it's probably been my biggest bugbear with Heineke is that he's always picked his number one side. It's eggs in one basket. And, you know, it, it's now <laughs> the chickens are coming home to roost, yeah. <laughs> to use yet another <laughs> metaphor. And I think that's perhaps the crux decision that, that Heineke now has to make. Okay, I'm either going to stick with uh, Frida Pre kicking it up for a banner to chase, yeah. old school, or getting Alberts and, uh, and Vermeulen back, and I'm going to stick with that. Or, okay, I've seen what they, these guys can do against Australia and New Zealand. It's yeah. a younger side. It's more fetches uh, to the breakdown. It's Creel and Allender, um, and we play that game. I, I thought on Saturday it just looked like they were betwixt and between, so they didn't know whether to play that sort of new game or stick with the old game. You know, De Villiers comes back, Creel goes out to the win, yeah. dreadful selection. I agree. Um, and they just look betwixt and between. And it was one of the things that influenced the complete horror show that, that, that unfolded. Yeah. So I think Maya must make a call. Okay, either ditch the old boys, yeah. and, we go, and we go the lighties and the new sort of ev evolution, or we go old school and rely on the old boys. I think both those games rely on power ball carriers. We missed both of Dwayne Vermeulen, Willem Alberts and possibly Francois Lowe as well in that role. Yeah. Without that forward momentum, the Argentinians just feasted on our breakdown and we had no, we had no continuity there. And they loved it. Yeah. Eh? You know, the, and, and that's where they wanted it more. Those guys were in there yeah. and they were over them. And, and the box just would, almost they didn't pitch and they were smashed out the way. But you're right. You know, you get Alberts back, you get Vermeulen back. And that speaks, and even Francois Lowe, you know, that, that speaks to a game that, that Heineke has always coached yeah. and one that, that works for him. Yeah, well, we don't have time for question of the week now. We've been gibbering away, jabbering away the whole time. Guys, thanks very much for tuning in again. Please keep the questions coming in. We'll be sure to get to them next week. Hopefully the next time we chat, South Africa has redeemed themselves with a win against Argentina and Buenos Aires. And please use the hashtag think tank on those questions. Until then, ciao.